Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Watch and Pray Devotional. We are in day 17 of 40 and today we're talking about breaking limitations. How to break the limitations of your life. I start the broadcast today by reading a scripture from Matthew chapter 21 from verse 12 to 16. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought, who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, and they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you ever, never read out of the mouth of babes, and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. This event, we all know, is known as the triumphant entry. Jesus entered into Jerusalem riding upon a donkey. It was his last week on earth. The first thing he did was to go into the temple. He chased out the money changers and all the traders in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes were very angry. These are the religious officials who interpret the law and regulate them in the temple. When we look at verse 15, it says that they were sore displeased. They were extremely, extremely angry when they heard also the ch children praising God. And Jesus quoted from Psalms 8 from verse 2. This verse tells us that there is power in our praise. Jesus Th that praise is also a weapon that can paralyze the enemy and the avenger. I'd like to just share um, a bit of, um, maybe just to explain what the enemy and, and the avenger is. The enemy is, the, per is the, the demonic spirit, okay, who is coming against you just for the sake of displeasing you or just making things uncomfortable for you or making things difficult for you or to try to stop your opportunities from reaching to you. So what is the difference between the enemy and the avenger? The avenger is the spirit that is trying to bring upon you, um, you know, things that you're, for the enemy, for instance, you didn't do anything per se for the enemy to attack you. It's just being the enemy, right? But for the avenger, there are evil spirits that come, you know, when maybe when you've committed a sin or you have done something bad, you know, and you're feeling guilty. So one, they try to increase your guilt. But remember that the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all guilt and sin, you know, and things like that. So if you are not conscious of what the blood of Jesus has done for you, the avenger can get you. So you could um, be right maybe guilty about something feeling guilty about something and then the the avenger comes and then causes some um negative situations to come into your life and then you say ah god is punishing me for my sin and things like that so that's the avenger but the bible says that when you're feeling such way when you feel guilty you feel like maybe something bad is going to happen to you you open a door actually for the enemy to actually attack you but at that point you ought to actually start to praise god so that you stop you know, the enemy or, or you stop the avenger from, you know, exerting upon you or taking advantage of you. Okay. So the fact that, that the fact that it is God who has ordained the strength makes it lethal and powerful. He said, you remember the scripture Jesus said, uh, read that he has ordained praise, you know, from the mouth of babes. So he says it makes it lethal and powerful. So it doesn't matter how small the child is, his praise is lethal. His praise is it's, um, powerful and it is able to steal the enemy and the avenger. This is what your praise and your worship will do. So imagine if it is in your mouth then. It will do battle and warfare for you. Imagine if Jesus Christ chose to visit our churches today. 
how many bishops and pastors will he chase out for doing business at the house of God, just like he did in the scripture that we read? Because some people are making merchandise of the gospel. But please take some time to pray for all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not for us to judge, but for us to pray for them so that they do not allow themselves to be corrupted and seen against God with obvious consequences, both here and hereafter. Watch and pray. Jesus Christ broke the limitations of religious hierarchy and rebuked the religious leaders without mincing words. Righteous anger is allowed in the church. It should never be exercised as an attitude of holier than thou, but you have to align with the Holy Spirit for direction and for message. Reading another scripture, Jesus Christ also broke the limitations of physical materials. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done on what they, and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he, he answered and said to them, you, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. It is amazing that Jesus Christ was concerned about everything relating to our total welfare, body, spirit, soul, and body. First, he noticed that his disciples were tired. He then asked them to go to a deserted place so that they could rest. So the scripture I read was Mark chapter 6, 30, verse 44. He then asked them to go to a deserted place so they, they could rest. This is a lesson for us too. As we carry out the business of the master, we should not ignore physical rest. Note that it is only a dis healthy disciple that can serve his master effectively. Secondly, Jesus came out and when he noticed the crowd had arrived, he also needed to rest. But when he knew there was work to do, he came out of his place of rest. So there is a time to rest and there is a time to work. Spiritual discernment is essential to guide us to take the most appropriate decision in every situation. The third thing is that when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. He saw a crowd of over 15,000 15, people, men, women, and children inclusive, as people without a shepherd. We must emulate our Lord when you listen to the news, when you notice what is happening around you, when you see leaders and followers making blunders over and over again. You should be moved with compassion like Jesus Christ. The fourth action point by Jesus Christ was to feed the hungry crowd. You can contrast the action suggested by the disciples to his. The disciples wanted the crowd to be sent away, and this is the attitude of most of us. You cannot blame the disciples because they could not imagine how they could would get food or money to buy food to feed 15,000 people. But for God, Jesus had no limitation. And this is what I'm saying to you. Take the limitations of your life. Nothing is impossible. Jesus took the bread and he took the fish and he broke the limitations on them. He exercised his faith. How? By first giving thanks. Psalm 49 verse 6 says, Let the high praises of God 
be in their mouth. Why? Because it is a weapon that breaks the power of the enemy. Another lesson that we learn from what Jesus did is the demonstration of holistic ministry. He ministered to their spiritual needs and he healed the sick. Glory to God. We thank you, Father, for all that you teach us in your word every single day. We are so, so grateful. So we have an action point here. Break all limitations in your life your family, your business, your church, by the power of thanksgiving, praise, and worship today. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is what we're going to use our entire day to do, that we're breaking all limitations in our lives, in our families, in our business, in our church, by the power of thanksgiving, praise, and worship. If you notice, we've talked a lot about praise and worship and thanksgiving, but it can never be enough. We just have to keep going and keep going and keep going. Make this confession with me. I break every limitation placed on me by the devil in the name of Jesus. Again, I break every limitation placed on me by the devil in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you so much for listening. I bless your day today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare that you have a productive day and a day full of favor and the blessings of God in the name of Jesus. Only good things are allowed to happen to you today. And Satan, I rebuke you. Take your hands off of God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command you to cease and desist from what you're doing against us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.